Oh, man. So we're on the last unit. That's crazy, isn't it? Didn't think we'd actually make it here, right? No, we knew all along. We'd get to the nervous system. So this is the last of the big four tissue types and is, of course, its own organ system like the muscles. So this system is going to be responsible for quite a bit when it comes to homeostasis. So again, here we are at the end of the course and we need to be reminded where we started, right? This idea of maintaining balance. So the nervous system has a, a huge role in this. The nervous system is going to be almost exclusively responsible for sensation, interpretation of that. So what does this mean? Sensation, the ability to have stimulation, to know something's changed. Uh, interpretation is going to be then telling us what has changed, right? And integration is going to be the idea of combining different... Hang on a second. So the integration part is the part where you take this information that's coming in from all these different sensors uh, throughout the body and try to figure out what's important, how they, how they influence each other, what the big picture is, as all you, these basic voices are screaming for attention, and the voices being the different, again, sensors um, scattered throughout your body. All right. And then from this information, the nervous system provides direction. So it's a controller. So this kind of it wraps up all three of these. So this direction is given to right muscles and glands for the most part. So those are the actual effectors or responders. All right. So um, which parts of the nervous system are most important for uh, for your life? Um, again, and please explain why. This is just stuff again to provoke you. Um, you, you absolutely have to have these sensors and you absolutely have to have the central nervous system. Um, I, I think one of the things to take home though is that uh, the ability to think is not quite as important as the ability to maintain balance. So, you know, we're going to talk about all parts of the brain in the up and coming chapters, but please remember that the ability to maintain your vital functions, vital, right, most important, uh, is key to survival. All right. So structure and functions, we always start with that, you know, again, we're reiterating what we already said. Sensory input, there's general senses and specific senses or special senses that we'll talk about. Um, general ones like touch, temperature, right? Uh, blood pressure, position, uh, special ones like taste and smell and sound and sight, okay? Integration, again, processing the stimuli, so all of these things coming in together and then producing, right, or directing some response because of all this information. Homeostasis, absolutely, that detection, again, sensory interpretation of what, what does this mean, and direction of response, um, both to internal changes and external changes. Mental activity, this is what a lot of people, uh, you've probably given this function to the nervous system throughout your life, but mental activity is, is just a part of all the other things the brain does. So this idea of consciousness, awareness, right, memory, so, um, and, and again, the analytical process, the reasoning is given as part of our mental activity. And then, of course, it also directs the contraction of muscle and glands, all right? So the divisions in the nervous system are really peripheral nervous system and central, as this very simple cartoon shows you. Now, the peripheral nervous system, so, so let's make it easy. The central, you'll see here in a second, is brain and spinal cord. If we are outside, cells outside the brain and spinal cord, we are no longer part of the central nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system is all this stuff scattered throughout your body, right? And it is further, right, broken down into the sensory division, also known as the afferent, because that's a directional term, or afferent, and the motor or efferent or efferent, okay? And I say that the motor division of the peripheral nervous system is further subdivided into somatic and autonomic. And autonomic is subdivided into parasympathetic and sympathetic. So we have a lot of ways to think of this whole system. Um, and, but we want to start the whole chapter by talking about what those divisions are. So this is, per, the peripheral nervous system is how we really do all of our sensory. Right, the central nervous system is the integrator, right, the interpreter, the director. Motor is the part of the nervous system that is directing the responses. All right, so and again, central nervous system that's just the brain and spinal cord. All right, so the cells um, that participate in this we looked at back in uh, when we talked about tissues. So, neurons are nerve cells, really, you know, nerves are actually just 
the axons, you're going to find out there's we have some very specific language that you you and I have probably both used a little loosely in this class. But cells are the neurons, and then the support cells are neuroglia. And this is what you saw on your, your spinal cord smear in the lab, all right? So we have a lot of models of the neuron and uh, not many of the neuroglia. About the only one you're going to see consistently are these Schwann cells that literally wrap themselves around the axon of a neuron, right? So the neuron consists of the cell body and the cell processes. So cell bodies, you know, can compare it to the other things we know. They have a single nucleus, like most of the cells in your body. They have a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum, also called chromatophilic substance or Nissel's bodies. And this is represented on your model in lab as well. And this indicates that a lot of protein synthesis is going on in these cells. All right, <clears throat> Golgi mitochondria, so I need mitochondria to power the synthesis and power the pumps that we're going to see that run nonstop in these cells. All right, uh, neurofilaments, so instead of myofilaments, right, neurofilaments, so structural aspects um, of the cell and, of course, the cytoskeleton is made up of microtubules. So this crazy shape it has has to come from a lot of support structures, all right? The cell processes, which are made up of these neurofilaments and the microtubules, are known as the dendrites, which right, can be multiple, like this one has here, or they can be a single one. It just We're going to look at a couple different classifications. And axons. So the axon is generally one and only one, though it branches when we get to the end of the axon. You'll see it branching here and then branching again. Right? But leaving the cell body, because this is a directional term, dendrites bring information to the cell body, axons, A away, take it away from it. So a neuron is only going to have one axon, right? And again, it's going to have a lot of mitochondria and microtubules and neurofilaments. And you'll see these things actually on the model in lab, all right? So I say, you know, there are regions in the nervous system that have lots of cell bodies and regions with lots of cell processes. And so collections of cell bodies are going to get a specific name and collections of cell processes again especially the axons can, will have a different name so we have to be very careful with language all right um so when we zoom out and look at the whole structure so here's a cartoon of the brain here's the entire brain right with the um dura maters around it and we'll uh, we'll look at those so the membranes are still here what we call the meninges and, um, and so this is to show this idea of gray matter and white matter. So I just mentioned on the previous slide, right, that we have regions in the systems that have lots of cell bodies and regions with lots of cell processes. These are those regions, right? So if you have a whole lot of um, axons in one place, and those, especially if those axons are myelinated, right, have these Schwann cells all around them, because the Schwann cells basically uh, make up the myelin sheath, Right? Then you get white matter because the myelin is a fatty substance, so and fats are white. If you have gray matter, like here in what we call the cerebral, because this is all the cerebrum, uh, cerebellum starting to show down here, uh, gray matter here in the cerebrum, um, these are not myelinated, and this indicates that we have a bunch of cell bodies. Right? So here's the, the actual cell body, the neuron, collectively all together. 100 billion really, in the cerebral cortex, a lot of these guys. All right, so here we say gray matter groups of neuron cell bodies and their dendrites with very little myelin. That's why they show up gray. In the central nervous system, we call this the cortex and the nuclei. So this is the cortex here. You don't see the actual nuclei. You'd see those within areas of the brain. In the peripheral nervous system, that collection of cell bodies is called a ganglion. So language is very important. The white matter are bundles of myelinated axons, right, so just the cell processes. In the central nervous system, we call those tracks, as you see the optic track here. In the peripheral nervous system, we call those nerves. So again, this tract is actually within the brain. This nerve is just outside of the brain. But both of these are collections of myelinated axons. All right, so functional divisions. Um, when we look again at the overall nervous system, 
Sensation, which is a stimulus or notification of a disruption. Again, disruption in homeostasis. Disruption in the norm. Something, a change has occurred. If a change has occurred and we can detect it, we call that sensation. All right? And that's, that sensation comes because we're going to stimulate sensors or receptors in the body. All right? Integration. Uh, this done again generally within the, the central nervous system. This again, this is part of the peripheral. We get perception, we get memory, learning, emotion, and motivation. And motivation for responses. So responses generally uh, begin in the central nervous system but are transmitted through the peripheral nervous system. All right? So the response itself, again, like the sensation, is, is just. Is this, we're going back out to the body. Generally, the response is to this sensation, right? So that's why we often use these terms feedback, right? So response, the nervous system will control, regulate, direct, right? So these are all verbs to help you understand what it's doing. Muscles and glands. So generally, the muscles and glands are going to restore what the balance that occurred. Uh, the the Im, you know, restore the balance after the imbalance disruption that occurred. All right. In the response part, we've already mentioned this, we talked about somatic and autonomic. So the response is, again, your motor division and somatic, right, the somatic motor division is part of the conscious, right, and chosen. So you, ha you make a choice. You make a choice to flex that biceps brachii and pick up that pen, all right? And you make a choice to walk away from some, you know, something, right, and, and again, flexing and extending alternately the, the legs, right, through those quadriceps and those hamstrings, right, the, uh, and then I say it does include reflexes, so even though reflexes tend to be involuntary, and when we say something is conscious, we are generally saying it's voluntary, but the somatic does include reflexes, and we look at, we'll look at those, a few of those in lab, right, the autonomic, right, is your unconscious, all right, so the unconscious conscious, right, um, means you didn't choose, right? You weren't aware of this, um, your, the directive from the brain. And the autonomic is generally going to be uh, reserved for areas of the brain stem in initiating the response. And it's going to be affecting or directing, I should say, the smooth muscle and the cardiac muscle and then many, many glands in, throughout the body. And generally, the autonomic, again, is done for homeostasis. This is a very, you know, you can easily see the uh, balance restored. All right. <clears throat> now, another response subdivision. All right, so we do have to talk about just a, a couple more things uh, in the general overview. And that is, again, the enteric nervous system. So the enteric nervous system is part of the peripheral nervous system and is affected, therefore, by the central nervous system, like the peripheral nervous system. But it has an independent um, aspect to it. Um, we also see this with the cardiac muscle too. So enteric nervous system is going to be smooth muscle that lines right all these tubes throughout the digestive tract, and the cardiac again is the heart. So just this is just to kind of I'm not going to write any test questions on this. I'm just trying to you know bring this to your attention. So uh, again, nice cartoon to look at everybody um, all together here, brain perception processing of sensory, all right? So sensory, again, somatic and autonomic. Um, execution of voluntary motor responses, somatic. Regulation of homeostatic mechanisms, autonomic. So repeating what we've already said. The peripheral nervous system, um, lots and lots of nerves, so myelinated axons. Um, so fibers is another term we use for this, for the nerves. Of sensory and motor neurons, all right? And then uh, digestive tract, the enteric nervous system, is throughout the digestive track itself in the walls of the tubes and is responsible for this automated function, right? So autonomous means it, it's working independent and doesn't need the brain and spinal cord to direct it on what to do. So it's, a, it's basically one big reflex when, you, when we talk about the digestive tract. Uh, the spinal cord, but again, a, a reflex that's all monitored within the tube, not, not going through the brain. Spinal cord, part of the central nervous system, like the brain, initiates reflexes from the ventral horn. We'll look at these parts here in the lateral horn. Pathways, so it's, it's a conduit. It allows things to come in and out between the periphery and the brain, so it's kind of a conduit in between. Ganglia, like nerves, part of the peripheral nervous system. 
all right so here's where we end